Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about how to synchronize and back up to and from a QNAP and TerraMaster NAS. Now whether it's your first, second or tenth NAS, chances are if you are used to using a NAS server, you know a network attached storage device, then chances are you care quite a lot about your backups and one of the main ways in which I recommend people back up their NAS data is once you've got a NAS, to get a second NAS, even a little bit more discreet, lower power, different brand or whatever, to back up the content of your NAS over to. Now this has a number of benefits. First and foremost, if your NAS is backing up, you know, think up mobile phones and iPads and tablets and laptops, all the things you use every day, if you're sending and synchronizing data from those to your NAS as a backup, and then delete data from your iPhone, your Pixel, your laptop, your whatever to make space, your NAS is no longer a backup. It is a, a repository of some files where they only exist on that NAS and therefore it's not a backup anymore, is it? And that's why getting a second NAS to back up to over the network can be very, very useful. It doesn't have to be the same capacity as your original NAS. I mean, it's good if it is. You can get a much smaller NAS, a much lower price NAS, and effectively be able to back up the content of one NAS onto the other and have a two-tier backup strategy. So, why these two brands? Well, QNAP NAS is probably one of the most advanced NAS brands out there with a great bespoke system and is very, very customizable. But that said, they aren't the cheapest in the market. And one of the cheapest out there is TerraMaster. And by cheapest, I don't mean bad. I mean, what you get is very, very good, and they're very, very affordable. They're just not quite as evolved as QNAP. So, there'll be a number of you out there that have bought a TerraMaster NAS in the few, last few years and have thought about moving up to a QNAP. Or, you own a QNAP NAS and you want to back up the content of your QNAP into a much more affordable backup TerraMaster. And that's what today's video is about. How do you do that? Well, Today's video is going to be all over the network, so as you can see both of these devices are on my own network, starting 192, and we're going to talk about just how easy it is to back up between them. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of the backup, there's a few little things we have to do on both NASs in order to conduct this. Now, on the TerraMaster, head over to an option called Backup. From here, we're able to set up um, the settings for R-Sync. R-Sync or remote synchronization is the means to back up to and from a NAS to another NAS over the network, hence the word remote. What you need to do is enable remote sync server. Now, by default, this box will not be ticked. The reason is because um, R-Sync has to be optional because you are sending data, in most cases, from your device elsewhere and it's not a setting that they're going to enable by default. Once you've enabled it, it will recommend a port. 873 is typically the default port they recommend you go for. I'd say leave it at 873 unless you've got a lot of technical knowledge about networks or you've got multiple backups happening on the network at the same time and therefore you could cause a port conflict. After that, add a username and password, and this is going to be a security credential dedicated just to this R-Sync. So it's separate from your login into your NAS, and this is effectively another step in the system of protection. I've added the username password and the password password. After that's done, click apply. Now, that's on the TerraMaster. On the QNAP, you want to open the application Hybrid Backup Sync. You will have to download it independently from the App Center on your QNAP NAS, but it is completely free and regularly updated with new features. Go into that application, which will take an extra second to go, and I do apologize because I am using screen recording software today, and consequently, there is a slight delay with the graphics on the web browser due to the GPU being so heavily consumed by the recording software. Get past all the little recommended tutorial skip steps there and open up the hybrid backup sync application. Head down to the backup server option here and you want the first option, rsync server. And once again, it's using the same port, 873, same as on both of them. Next, you can let it know if you want to have a limitation on upload and download speeds in case you have a busy network and I'll talk about that a little bit more later as well as enabling encryption and other services of data whilst it's being sent around. Next, make sure you assign a username and password once again for security purposes and click apply to save that information. 
it will save in the background and now we've prepared the framework for the synchronization of our NASes. Now, you don't always have to do both of these options because it does depend on which direction you're sending data, but it never hurts of enabling both in case you want to create a two-step backup system of synchronization. So say we want to back up our QNAP NAS over to our TerraMaster NAS. Well, on the QNAP, go back up to the top to all jobs. From here, scroll over to create a job then to create sync job. From here, we want to create a one-way sync on this occasion of sending data from the QNAP NAS to the TerraMaster. So we're going to select one-way sync and sync local to remote. From here, we select our sync as the option and then click next. Now by default, it will name the job, but you can name the synchronization job whatever you want. And if you have multiple jobs happening on the NAS from different folders, the different volumes, the different destinations, then maybe you want a better naming strategy. But I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Next, go down to settings and create a new rsync profile for the TerraMaster. So if we call this one Terra, and then from there we need to put the IP, that is, this device's location on the network so the QNAP can find the TerraMaster. Copy the IP from the TerraMaster and paste it into this window. If HTTPS slash slash colon whatever appears in there, get rid of it. All we need is the four sets of numbers. The port is still 873 and the username is the one that we set up earlier, admin and password. I do recommend you use your own credentials. After that, there's options with regards to encryption. And again, if you're a business user or using particularly sensitive data, you may want to use this option. Lastly, we click test. During the testing phase, the QNAP is now going to test the fidelity of the connection between the QNAP and the TerraMaster NAS. It's going to test the maximum speeds, upload and download. Now it's worth mentioning that the QNAP I'm using right now is not on strictly the straightest network and actually it's been connected via a couple of power line adapters. Consequently, the speeds I'm getting are gonna be lower than the speeds that you would traditionally get. So don't worry too much about the speed on my screen, yours will be better. After this, we can enable a maximum transfer rate. As mentioned, I thought I'd address this later. If you are running a very busy network or you have lots of connected users, maybe you're streaming dense big media or you have a selection of cameras ip cameras connected around your network environment you may wish to minimize the transmission between these NASes. otherwise your bandwidth that is the available um, flow of your network will be taken up by this backup and it will prevent other devices taking advantage of the network clicking ok we've now created the identity of the TerraMaster server. Next, we have to decide what files are going where. The source folder will be on our QNAP. We select which one or all of these folders we want to add to be synchronized with our TerraMaster. Let's select just the one, and I'm gonna go for the download folder. Then, over here, we can select the destination folder. From the destination folder, we are presented with the folders that are readily available on the TerraMaster NAS. I'm going to stick them directly in the public folder. Then we click add. So now we've created our QNAP to Terra Master job. There are advanced options below that allow you to set up a schedule of how and when you want it to kick off, as well as policies with regards to file types and retention policies of metadata and microdata like thumbnails, whether it will be sent with the backup. Finally, you can set it up that if the job fails due to a network problem or an IP identity crisis, then you can click that and the job will just keep repeating until it's done. We've created our job there and we can synchronize it now if we choose, but I won't. I'll leave the job just for now so we can come back to it later and action that job when we feel like it. Now, say we wanted to send data from the TerraMaster to the QNAP. Well, that's another, you know, it's very, very similar, but not quite as bespoke. What we need to do on this option here is go to the second option, rsync backup. From rsync backup, we click create. And then from there, we give it a task name. Let's call this one QNAP. Then we need the IP of the QNAP. So once again, we head over here and we need that IP again, ensuring that we don't have 
http or www or colons or slashes or any of that bump. We just want the four sets of numbers separated by dots. The port hasn't changed and the username and password are the ones we set up earlier for our QNAP. We click test and here's where we'll know if it works and it did, otherwise a red error message will appear. Click next and now we have to say the path. Where are we sending our data? So these are the folders on the QNAP where we're going to send our TerraMaster data over. I'm going to select CCTV just for the hell of it. Then source path is a folder on our TerraMaster. And these are the files from the TerraMaster that we're sending. Let's go for the public folder. I click next and now we can set that schedule. Let's go for every day around about 1am where people are going to be asleep and no one's going to be affected by high bandwidth use. After that, we can enable options such as compression or modifications and folders, whether you're allowed to modify the folders that you send over. There's also options for separating folders in terms of incremental backup and more. But for now, let's leave a lot of these options as default and you can go through them yourself later. Once we click complete, the job is done and it will begin the initial backup. And that's it. Now we're backing up the content of our TerraMaster, that folder at least, to the QNAP. And remember, you can back up individual folders or much, much bigger collections of data, as big as the entire NAS's data collection itself. Meanwhile, on the QNAP, what we can do is click Sync now, and it will now begin the job of synchronizing and sending data from the folder I selected to the TerraMaster. And remember, you can select multiple folders as big as small as you want. The only thing that will happen is it might take a little bit longer and always ensure there's enough space on the NAS you're sending data to to ensure that the operation is successful. Otherwise, that has been how to synchronize data between a TerraMaster and a QNAT NAS. If you've got any questions, do let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, click like to let me know and helps me make these videos. Alternatively, Click subscribe to learn more about NAS or click the bell notification to get push notifications from YouTube about videos that are far more relevant to you rather than getting all the videos that a subscriber would get. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.